What's up everybody, my name is Brad and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back at it with another book review for you guys. And today I want to talk about Beastesses. I want to talk about Beasts of the Caliber Lodge by L.J. Doherty. And recently we actually had L.J. on our most recent episode of Paper Cuts. I'll link that up here in the cards if you want to go check that out. It was a lot of fun getting to talk with L.J., some great conversation. Well, this is his debut novel, Beasts of the Caliber Lodge. And I actually have an older edition of the book that's since been re-released with brand new cover art to sort of match the style for the sequel, which is Primal Reserve is book two in these series. So the new book has this same art style cover art. So I'll put my copy down and put up the new cover art. So if you go out and buy the book today, you'll get this brand new cover art on there. Uh, but this series, not only the book, but the series itself is billed as being espionage horror. And that was something I hadn't heard of before. It's something I haven't read before. At least I don't think I've read it because if it was espionage horror, it definitely wasn't classified as being espionage horror. Uh, but after reading Beast of the Caliber Lodge, this was something I definitely did not know that I needed in my life. But I definitely want to read more espionage horror type stories. And with this book in particular, there was um, a certain charm to it, a certain feeling, a certain vibe that it gave off that it evoked in me that I can't quite pinpoint and place my finger on. There was something about it, it felt, it felt classic. Maybe it was a bit nostalgia. Um, it felt like it was written in a time long since gone by. This is a, a suave, sophisticated spy thriller blended with lurid pulp horror. And I think what did it for me, what it was, these uh, feelings it was evoking in me was it was really harkening back to a lot of the movies I watched growing up and loved as a kid. You know, taking a, a pinch of James Bond, adding in a splash of Indiana Jones, and shaking it all up. Actually, be sure you shake it. Don't stir it, please and thank you. And then you garnish that with a slice of Sasquatch horror, and you have a potently blended concoction that is just an absolute blast and a whole lot of fun. So in Beasts of the Caliber Lodge, our main character is a man by the name of Jimmy Knotts, and he is a Nazi hunter in a post-World War II world. He is tracking down these war criminals that have been in hiding in hopes of bringing them to justice for the atrocities they committed during the war. And that alone fascinated me without anything to do with the horror aspects or Sasquatch or whatever, just it being about Nazi hunters and World War II and whatnot, that alone grabbed my attention and my interest, making me want to read this book. I think I've talked about it on the channel before. I have always been fascinated with World War II, reading about it and learning as much as I can about that time period. And it hasn't been until recently, within the couple of years or so, uh, watching shows like Hunting Hitler, uh, certain episodes of Expedition Unknown, that has really um, piqued my curiosity in the events after the war, what happened after the war. You, know, you have all these Nazis that escaped Germany at the time once the war was over, that went into hiding, fleeing Germany. A lot of them went to South America, where they basically just disappeared into hiding. And I say all that because that's where Beast of the Caliber Lodge, where it kicks off. We're down in Argentina in South America with Jimmy Knotts and his group of Nazi hunters. They're hot on the trail of a really dangerous Nazi that they're hoping to capture and get knowledge from, get information out of, that could possibly lead them to other Nazi targets that are in hiding. And I don't want to say too much more about the plot, but that trail they're on, hunting down that Nazi, that eventually leads Jimmy Knotts to the Caliber Lodge. It's a hunting retreat for the wealthy elite. That rhymed by Ken the Hat. But it's a hunting retreat for the wealthy elite, like I said. And it's deep in the wilds of the Alaskan frontier. And the guests there, they pay a high, high premium for the opportunity to hunt one of the world's most dangerous and rare creatures, and I'm not talking about polar bears, I'm not talking about caribou, elk, anything like that. This book involves Sasquatches, so I think you can put two and two together there for what the guests at the Caliber Lodge are out there hunting down. So this book, it's just a whole lot of pulpy action adventure fun, which was awesome, and I really enjoyed it, but something I particularly enjoyed about the book that I wasn't expecting to get out of a book like this, that elevated it above, in my opinion, what you would normally see in like pulp horror was this look at this dynamic of good versus evil, of morality, of what makes something good and what makes something evil. Uh, normally in a book like this, the, the humans would be considered the good guys, the guys you're supposed to be rooting for. And the Sasquatches, they would be considered the villains, the evil, who you're rooting against. But that might not be the case necessarily 
in this book. Doherty, he puts a little twist on what your expectations are going into a book like this. And I'll say the humans in this book, some of the guests of the Caliber Lodge, they're just downright bad, nasty, heinous people. And that's not including the Nazi that's there. Some other people are just horrible people as well. And maybe the, the Sasquatches aren't as quote unquote evil as you would expect them to be. Don't get me wrong. They're still, you know, completely dangerous and ripping people to, to shreds and everything like that. But maybe the, the humans are more villainous than the actual, the monsters in the book. And that's sort of my take on it. I don't want to say too much more about it. But at times I found myself rooting for the uh, so-called other team, rooting for the Sasquatches against these human villainous monsters. So the way this book is written, the prose, the way it's all set up and laid out, it feels very cinematic. And that might also be in part due to that this actually started out life as a screenplay. Uh, but with Docker Dockerty's writing, I could vividly picture these different set locations, the Anaco House in Argentina near the beginning of the book, snow-covered Alaska, and the Caliber Lodge, and all the action sequences, they play it out in my mind like I was watching a movie up on the big screen. And to sort of still a quote from the, not a quote, but a blurb from the back of the book uh, by Cameron Robeek, if Spielberg made a Bigfoot movie, it would be like Beast of the Caliber Lodge. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Talking about earlier, you know, sort of the classics, the, the feel that this book gave me, it feels like a Spielberg movie. It feels like if Ian Fleming wrote a James Bond book, and put Sasquatch in there. That's sort of what you would get with this book, Beast of the Caliber Lodge. Pure pulpy escapism. Beast of the Caliber Lodge by L.J. Dougherty is just downright fun. I had an absolute blast reading this book. It's brimming with thrills, action, adventure, and bloody mayhem. And honestly, what more could you ask for in a pulp horror, espionage horror type book? If you're looking to be entertained and have in a surprising bit of depth added into the story, then look no further than this one. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Beast of the Caliber Lodge. Ended up giving it four stars. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading book two in the series, Primal Reserve. This one takes place a year after book one, but this time we're going down along the Amazon River, down in the rainforest, which I'm all about that jungle type setting. I think it's going to be a blast. And he, LJ is actually working on book three, which might come out later this year. Don't hold me to that. Uh, it's, book three is called Blood Opus. So just an, an espionage horror trilogy just with bits of James Bond, Indiana Jones, all that stuff mixed together and laying horror over top of that. I'm all about it. I'm here for it all. Uh, that's it. That's been my review of Beast of the Caliber Lodge by L.J. Doherty. It was a blast. I hope you check it out. It was a lot of fun. Well, thank you for spending your time with me today. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.